Hi everyone, welcome to RPV City Talk. I'm Liz Brown Swanson and I'm here with our wonderful mayor of Rancho Palos Verdes, Mayor Susan Brooks. Every month we're together doing the show normally in the studio, but today, big treat for everyone. We're at your home, your gorgeous home, and thank you, uh, thank you for opening up your house today so that we could do this here, take our show on the road. Oh, thank you. It's a pleasure to have you all here. And this is my paradise, and we live in the paradise, so we're very fortunate here. And I do have um, loads of gardens and trees, and it's really been a work in progress, and it's taken 30, over 30 years to put this all together. And plus, I have beautiful fossils, which have been videotaped by the members of the Land Conservancy yeah. in the preserve. History in the making Those in things. this backyard, and uh, like you said, you moved here 33 years ago. How did you end up in Rancho Palos Verdes? Uh, we were driving from uh, Long Beach to Pacific Palisades, and one of the partners in my husband's firm, while well, I had two little kids with me, was you might want to stop in this little place called Palos Verdes and just drive around and see what you think. And sure enough, we just drove around, and as soon as we rounded that corner on Palos Verdes Drive South, coming from San Pedro, going around the peninsula, uh, it took my breath away. And because I now live on the east side of the hill coming down those switchbacks, every time I come down those switchbacks, it takes my breath away. Mm -hmm. It's so beautiful with the, the melding between the land and the sea and the beautiful pastoral hillsides. It's just paradise. It is. I love that you always call this community paradise. And your effort and the council's effort is to preserve it and, and keep it beautiful. <laughs> it's getting hard. I know. We're going to roll up our sleeves a lot these days. We're working very hard. We always begin our show typically talking about public safety because that's yeah. the number one concern of the council to keep our community safe. So give us an update on the crime stats. How are we doing in RPV um, in, in terms of law enforcement efforts? Sure. Well, the council right now is working on, um, we've just updated our public safety strategic plan. We started this plan in 20. 15 after we had this rash of burglaries of course we we surmise that they're coming from the release from the state of felons that were deemed to be um, non-threatening uh, AB 109 prop 47 and prop 57 so we installed these automatic license plate readers we had 45 of them planted around the peninsula so now they do cover the entire peninsula. And we saw a rapid drop in crime in one year. It went from 184 burglaries to 92. And the following year, in 2017, we had a slight uptick. And we believe that has a lot to do with what happens when this crime ebbs mm -hmm. and flows. And also some of these guys are getting smarter. So we're getting smarter, and we've instituted the ring system, as you know, right. which I have at my home, along with several other systems. And when you're saying that, we were saying earlier, there, there was a, the slogan the city this month is called uh, springtime is ring time because the city is offering all residents, RPB residents, a incentive. You can get a discount and save up to $100. And it's a video surveillance camera system. It's, you hook it up through your doorbell. And and um, and you can go online with the city and, and prove you're a resident, and you can get the code and then purchase it through Ring.com. So you're saying you have one? I do. I, I have it on it my works. phone, and and the chimes are set. So if somebody walks in front of the house, then you would hear the chimes go off. And if uh, I am in a meeting, like I was with the city manager not too long ago, all of a sudden the chimes went off on my phone. Mm -hmm. This is actually me just today. Uh, it, the chimes went off, and I was walking into, I guess, I don't know if it's on. But anyway, it's a very live, very real photograph. And it's not a photograph, it's motion, and they, it stays on the system. You pay a nominal fee to keep the feed all the time. It's right. a very affordable way to add an extra layer yeah. of protection to your house, because you see who's coming and going, and mostly it's, it's people... It's amazing that, that this camera has such a wide span. Mm -hmm. And see, this is me actually going into the house. So you, show, you saw so, this crew show up today, that probably created right, the motion it does. in the actually driveway. Actually, your, yes, motion in the driveway. It depends on where you set the motion signal. Mm -hmm. You can have chimes, you can have the ring, but it, it is very helpful. Yeah. And the good thing about you it can too. put them all over the you can put cameras all around your different entrances as well so it and it's great that the city is sponsoring this program now where we're going to be part of a test pilot program where if we can saturate a complete neighborhood 
Um, I can tell you that right now what's happening is there was somebody up above on the street right above me uh, a couple of weeks ago, and I got an alert from somebody that they videotaped was walking door to door. And the alert posted to everybody around, because right, we all sure. have ring, and actually I have the best ring, which is nosy neighbors. I mean, if you have really good neighborhood watch, your neighbors know what you're doing. Right. So you can't be ashamed of what you're doing in and your life. You can't hide too much, mm -hmm. but so you can have a good time. The ring, the ring program, again, I just want to remind residents that it's through the month of April that the city offers this incentive and ring matches it. So you need to email um, Jackie Ruiz at the city. Yes. It's really the way to do it. It's J-R-U-I-Z at rpvca.gov. We're going to put that up there. So you can just email and she can explain, but you have to be a resident. And also, though, there is a free app that anyone can download on, through ring.com, even if you don't buy the product. So, again, that video information is being shared by people that have it. And you can see, like, this guy or lady was in my neighborhood. Whether you have it or not. That's right. Activity. If you just have the app, you can you get that for free. I think the ring people are making, well, who they were just bought by Amazon. Is that right? Yeah. I think so. And the other thing is, is that I talked to a couple, a detective from the sheriff's department. And, in fact, since people are using these, they've, it's been responsible for definitely cap capturing um, right. perpetrators that yes. are out there that get caught on video. So it from works. From a neighboring home, they could catch a burglar from a home where somebody was actually bound and gagged. Right. But, uh, you know, these things do happen, but in our community, they're very few and far between comparatively when you compare us to the rest of uh, uh, surrounding areas and communities. But what was amazing was that over 62 hits were hit on the ALPR readers for arrests for auto theft. So Captain Berenger says that, um, I asked him, were these vehicles stolen from within the city? And he said, no, most of them came into the city from the outside, and because we have the ALPR readers, we'll it's kind of like a roach trap, except we're not the roach trap. Uh, you know, where they go into the roach hotel, but they don't go out. out. So you have that kind of scenario, and I have to tell you, uh, they get hit every time. So these guys should know better than to be coming here by now. Okay. Well, um, thank you for sharing and letting us take a look at your doorbell system. Um, we are going to take a quick break and come back with lots more here with the mayor about what's going on in the city. So stay with us here on City Talk. Hello, everyone. My name is Deputy Sampson from LA County Sheriff's Department, currently assigned to Lomita Station. As your new public information officer, I'll be sharing relevant information related to law enforcement and the communities that we serve. These communities include Lomita, Rolling Hills, Rolling Hills Estates, Rancho Palos Verdes, and the unincorporated areas of Palos Verdes Peninsula and San Pedro. Today, I'll be sharing with you the very first public safety awareness tip from Lomita Station. Protect your valuables especially in your vehicle. You can do this by making sure your vehicle is locked at all times, whether it's parked at a mall, your kid's school, a restaurant, or even right in your own driveway. All right, that's it for today. If you have any topics you'd like for us to cover, leave us a comment and we'll see you next week. Welcome back to RPV City Talk. I'm here with Mayor Susan Brooks at her beautiful home as we continue talking about issues happening in our city. Um, the month of April, two city council meetings. We want to look at some of the items that the council voted on, right? You have item after item. Um, but one of the big things that came up at that meeting was um, the city council decided to vote to switch the city attorney. It was Dave Alshire, and now you've got um, someone with his firm that is uh, Bill, Widna Bill Winder. Winder. Yes, and I can tell you about switch. that. What happened was um, Dave Alshire, who's an outstanding attorney, uh, is the managing partner of his firm. And there was so much work to be done in the city of Rancho Palos Verdes while he also had other cities that he was taking care of. So it really appeared to the council and um, that, you know, there was a new opportunity with his other equal partner, uh, Bill Winder, who had just returned from his sabbatical. So he was able to come in and, and take on our city, and we are very pleased with the excellent services from both of them. They've really, really stepped up to the plate, and uh, I have to say that they're doing an outstanding job, and we are really looking. So 
Dave Alshire will continue to do some special projects that he was working on, but as Bill Winder gets winds up yes. <laughs> and gets used to uh, to our city, and we really have a much lar we have a very large constituency base that is um, active. Mm -hmm. Well, some more than others. Right. Um, you brought on Dave Elshar's form in 2015, and, and he replaced the longtime city attorney. And I think part of the you know concerns of residents always is uh, to make sure whoever the city attorney is, let's try to contain legal costs. So, yes. how effective has you know Elshar's firm been? Just because there has been an increase in litigation. Yes, so. there is. I would say yes, there has been an increase, and uh, actually the the fiscal year is not over yet, so we'll see how it all pans out in the end. But right now. With this transition, we do have increased litigation. We have the wireless ordinance, which cost uh, an additional amount of money. We have um, there are, were over seventy public records requests uh, since January, and we've been told by state and local officials alike and organizations that there are more in the city of Rancho Palos Verdes than in most cities. And this has been a long-standing tradition, which costs the taxpayer a lot of money. And I hate to have to say this, but many of these are politically based mm -hmm. and politically charged. And it's unfortunate because we really need to get, we have so much city business to do. That is so important. But public records requests are important, and, right. and residents have a right to know. So we want to give keep them as accessible as possible. And unfortunately, we have litigation right now with trying to obtain public records um, that we are unable to do and we have that responsibility to our residents to get to it before we end up holding the bag in some another lawsuit so we right. don't need another lawsuit so so for the public to know I know that um, the um, I saw the new city attorney that was at the meeting and he certainly said that he's he knows how engaged this community is and he absolutely plans to do his best to you know to to be mindful of, of trying to do all these legal um, projects and things he has to work on and do it in the most cost effective way and yeah I see a real dedication in, in these gentlemen and uh, you know there is there's a big difference between uh, I see between municipal attorneys and uh, of course I was married to an attorney for 30 years so and other some other types of attorneys that may be a little bit more um, oriented toward some other strategic end. I think municipal attorneys, they make, believe it or not, they make less money mm -hmm. and they are more dedicated uh, to people in the community and it's a service more, um, to a large extent, it really is. Since we're talking about money, let's move on to the fact that it's budget season right now. Oh, yeah. hold, the city council has been holding That's budget right. workshops and how is, the, how is the process working? How is the budget shaping up for the next fiscal year? Well, the budget is, um, you know, we're fortunate that we do have a healthy budget in Rancho Palos Verdes. We have the healthiest budget on the Palos Verdes Peninsula. Of course, Terranea has been a big help for us. Uh, we, it looks like we're still in the $30 million range for our budget. We have our biggest expenditures, of course, our public safety. Um, and Paying for the sheriff's contract. And the sheriff's contract, yes. And... You know, the sheriff's contract is part of L.A. County Sheriff's Department, and they do uh, increase uh, gradually as everything else does. But we do have, um, you know, we, we get good revenue from uh, property taxes, our number one f form of revenue. And then we get, so that's about $12 million, and that will expect to go up because property values are going up. And then also the Terranea, the TOT tax, transient occupancy tax from Terranea, uh, was about 5.7 million. They've had some challenges of late with uh, union organization requests um, that are really challenging them. And our city and our city council is very supportive of Terranea. And the work they do, and the work they do for the community, has been outstanding. Mm -hmm. So Their those are some challenges. As big as they hope, but they're still yes. 
but they're, they're still, still good. substantial. Yeah. So, because I was going to ask you, sort of, what are some of the city's biggest expenditures, and and how do we get the revenues? You just said property taxes, and you said sheriffs. What else eats up a lot of the budget for the city? What are the, some of their big big ticket items? Well, we have we have staff. We have staff uh, salaries. Actually, you know, mm -hmm. you're going to have to pay to have people do the work. Mm -hmm. We are the volunteers, essentially, as the city council members, and we're working harder than ever. And the staff is working harder than ever. People are really. I believe we're pushing the boundaries, actually, uh, moving forward with a lot of projects that are very important that have been put on the back burner for many years. One that we're going to be tackling with tomorrow night is the general plan. And this has been uh, being worked on for, like, uh, since 2002 to try to, to work on um, updating this general plan. And it was assigned to the Planning Commission uh, many cities will go and contract with an outside firm to do something like this, and that could cost upwards of a million dollars. And so our planning commission has been working on this for a long time, revolving planning commissioners and city councils. And so what's happened is now finally it's going to come to the council for um, a final approval. We just finished the National Conservation Cities Plan, and that was the NCCP, and that was 12 years old. So rather than pushing these from one council to another, this council is saying the buck stops here. Mm -hmm. But it is a lot of work. And we also have uh, an increased amount of users in the preserve uh, to and in our parks. And it's causing us to really reconsider some of our activities and how we're going to um, have the public access this and have a great time in Palos Verdes without impinging on the residents, right. which are a primary concern. So you've got a lot in the pipeline, so to speak. What are some of the um, biggest capital improvement projects that um, are, that the focus is building on? Like, you know, we've heard talk, for example, of needing maybe a new civic center. Like, how does that all play out as you're making the plans for well, what goes the, forward? Yeah, a, a civic center, um, uh, We had, there is a civic center a committee right now that's looking at uh, bringing these issues to the public. So that's, that's very important because we do not have the proper emergency services on the, south, on the southwest side of the peninsula between Terranea, Golden Cove, and that area, Point Vicente Interpretive Center, particularly on weekends. This is the most populated part of the hill, and, and there are no you. emergency services there. So There's no ambulance. It. There's no, the, the closest police department is either the Palos Verdes Estates Police Department or the Lomita Sheriff, which is in Lomita, even though we do have our cars running all around the peninsula. Um, we do, and we, the, the fire station on Palos Verdes Drive South is a very small single unit station. In the event of something large, it would take a much longer period of time. So emergency services are crucial, and we're trying to obtain some of that land to see if that land can be used for that purpose uh, from the state land management mm -hmm. people. And it takes a lot of heads to be working on this. Plus, we also have the Portuguese Bend landslide, which is the largest landslide in the Western Hemisphere, folks. And for a long time, we've been maintaining it, maintaining that road. And so the quest is now to see what we can do to really mitigate, seriously mitigate that slide. And so there are experts looking at this together now. This right. also will come back to the council. But those are two items that the funding for those would come from an outside source. They would come from grants yeah. that um, could be obtained from the city, which our and city manager feels that he can do. The Civic Center or the uh, trying to mitigate uh, Portuguese ban, you tens of millions of dollars involved in all of that. Right. We have, uh, on this Saturday, when we have our capital improvement project, we'll be taking all those issues up to see how we're going to prioritize these projects. But there are, you know, we actually have that ongoing pavement management program, and that's about five point seven million dollars I believe so it, we have that as well as other issues there's L Lodera Linda um, of course that's another one that has to be looked at in terms of where the funding is going to come from mm -hmm. so we're not sure that would be included in the CIP right. program so regarding the budget process at this point you're saying you're having workshops you're meeting on Saturday when will um, it'll go before the council then the draft and all that? Well, May 15th, yeah. we'll be looking at that. So um, the and we'll be, yeah, the community will be able to weigh in on that. So this is just a workshop on Saturday. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, we did the first part where we approved the draft general plan that was presented by Deborah Cullen, our excellent finance director. So, I mean, that, that all looked very good. You know, the, the money evens out, and the city, our city is so frugal and so conservative that we make sure that the money comes in for TOT. You know, if it goes into the general fund and it goes over to CIP, we have to make sure we cover our essential services first. Okay. So, You're and public safety is one of them. And the community can check all this out by either watching council meetings on RPV TV or going on the city website. You can pull all this amazing information up. It's it's to navigate, to become informed and be involved. And so I want to move on to the council meeting that you had the last one in April, because at that one you had residents showing up regarding the ongoing parking uh, problems by Del Cerro Park in that neighborhood. Yes. And um, cause you referenced earlier how we've got, you know, we've become the place where everybody wants to be, Rancho Palos Verdes to come into the preserve. And, and this has impacted that neighborhood. We've been hearing it for years. So yeah. the council was asked to help with their problems with cars and the parking problem. So what, how, you had all these options that you could choose from. You chose what was called option three when you voted on. So tell. I think we did, yes. Wasn't we option three, whatever. Those options but so what did that. you decide to do at this point as you fa try to, to work with them? Well, in trying to address the problems, there are homes that happen to be at the end of the entrance to El Del Cerro Park and individuals who live in those homes could not get out of those homes. And if there were an emergency uh, in any way, shape or form, and there have been, uh, there have been cars that just block it. They just double park, even though there is a red line, there are signs. So everything was done. So the city has decided to take away the parking in that area. And by removing that parking at this point, bringing it over to Crenshaw, we continue to have a problem about accessing the preserve. So the staff is going to be coming back, I believe it's August 7th, with solutions that we've asked them to come back with about how people are going to park without impacting the residents. They're impacted in the Island View community. Um, there, you know, there is, uh, even though we have the sheriffs in the preserve, which we pay extra for, by the way, it's like a half a million bucks, mm -hmm. that is a lot of money that we're paying for these sheriffs to patrol the preserve because the rangers apparently uh, were not as effective as they could have been. But we really, really do um, need to find a solution to this. Right. So at this point, I have suggestions, but the you know, we'll see what point, the staff comes up. You, you're opting to take some some of the those parking. I think there was 16 parking spots that'll be was including it? the handicap. Okay, and then um, also they'll just you'll do a new green space and all that, yeah, and this so gets paid be, for by the city, right? That's well, that's part of the issue is that we have to look at how that's going to be paid for. Because part of, well, if it's an easement, that which we're not looking at at this point, that's one thing. But if we just um, take over that portion of it, then that would, that, that would be, a portion of that would be the city's cost. Okay. Um, moving on to another matter that came before the council. Give, we don't give uh, gifts to, you know, we can't give a gift of mm. public funds to private residents right. for private access. So, so and this issue okay. with trying to resolve the parking as we wrap it up there has, it's sort of, there's other approaches that might be considered down the, down the, down the road, right? Like, it's, I think this is sort of your phasing in efforts and solutions. There has to be other solutions because right now that place is jam-packed up there. I know. I never and go up there to even go into the preserve. That well, way. there are other it's access assumed. points to the preserve, yeah. but that just, you know, the question is all about uh, usage. Um, perhaps paid parking is going to be one of the solutions in the future. Uh, we do know that that has strongly been suggested to the council that we start looking at that. Plus, somebody has to pay. Somebody has to pay for all this access because mm -hmm. guess what, folks? Rancho Palos Verdes is paying for not only the whole peninsula, but everybody who comes to the preserve, to our parks, and we, we just did meet the goats, and right. we had a throng of cars, yes. which was great and wonderful, but you we know, know we there's a lot has of to be controlled. Here. And on a cyber, I had just went to the art show at the Wayfarers Chapel, had a, their annual um, art show, and at that visitor center, when I was talking to one of the visitor center 
um, folks. They said last year alone at that visitor center, half a million people checked in through there. So we know people are, that's just the chapel. So these people are all, uh, people that are coming in are enjoying. Well, it's a beautiful rest. place to come to. I right. mean, I came here because it was paradise. Other people are discovering it. Yeah. So you can't tell people they can't visit. They, they can't come in right. America. This is not a gated community. Mm -hmm. So you, we just have to make sure that we take care of our residents and we make sure that the people are able to see the beauty that is around them. Okay. One way you're working on helping out the community is with the city's street light yes. services program. At That's the council right. meeting at the end of April, you also then awarded a contract to Siemens Industry. Yes, to and Siemens. they're going to manage our, our city's street lights program. So explain what that program's all about and what's going on with that. Well, I want to give credit, first of all, where it's due, because this originated in 2015 with former mayor uh, Jim Knight. And Jim came forward to the council and pointed out how important it would be if we could look into trans transitioning these uh, high intensity lights to LEDs and also we would have Southern opportunity, California Edison Southern California Edison lights, there's 1800 of these that are, we're going to be saving $135,000 a year on by changing the lumens. But it gives us another bang for our buck by we can hang the ALPRs there, particularly in Eastview, where we're not done with the automatic license mm -hmm. plate readers. Uh, we will have the wire te wireless telecommunication devices that nobody wants, perhaps on those lights. And the homeowners can potentially use them for security cameras. So. Yeah. They're, they're multi-use for these, and it's a win-win. Siemens does an outstanding job. Anybody who follows them knows that, and they're going to maintain them. Okay. And the city will be able to respond immediately if there's a problem with the street light. Good move by the council. Another uh, great move that I think some of the, the residents are applauding is at the council's uh, meeting on, on April 3rd. Um, what came up was film permits for the city's RPV beach. Explain what happened there I'm not, that, that, that drove the council to decide no filming at uh, permits are going to be issued for the city's beach, RPV beach, which is below Trump right. National. And it used to be called Trump Beach, and then, yeah. and then it was deeded over to the city, and we had a problem with but the dog the beach. beach. Below now it, Trump National. So there is a beach down there, and filming was occurring, and it, it's a tremendous haul to get all the equipment to this. It's very inaccessible. There's no drive to it and it abuts a private beach and a private beach club. And, but on top of that, um, the particular filming that they were doing was, was, was pretty, it was, like uh, war. It, it was yeah, like it was military. staged military SWAT teams and a lot of people weren't sure if it was real or if it was staged. They hadn't read all their emails and notices that they had gotten repeatedly. But it was obvious that there are things that are not appropriate for this community, and the fact that they couldn't even access that without having to traipse through what used to be the archery range, which is not any longer, uh, was apparent that that was an inappropriate uh, use for it. So that's why that's kaput. But because we're such a beautiful community, um, we are we issue film per this filming we see it all the time. We do. Although yeah. I think at that council meeting I saw that the number of major films being proposed to come here has has dropped. But right. we did increase the fees. Um, a lot of residents seem to feel that it's not mm -hmm. necessary that you know we become the major staging area for every race car and mm -hmm. uh, in town. Uh, Toronto gets you know the other other countries like Canada gets a lot of ads now where yeah. they're filming. I know I'm a member of the Be PBC Beach Club and we see lots of activity down there with yeah. filming a lot. Right. It's again incredible backdrop. Beautiful. So that's good and I know that in that process too I noticed that um, the Kit Fox with the city is now going to also kind of kind of not clean up but the film film permitting process in the city and make sure that all the the process is sort of put in an order. Right, and we have a lot of processes that we're changing, you know, in terms of prorating things mm -hmm. or, or judging, uh, rating them accordingly, so. Yeah, um, one thing that I, that you organized for the city was the Coyote Management Workshop that was at Hess Park. It involved PVE and um, RHE and then RPV, and it was to look at the Wildlife Watch Program. And we have a few minutes left, but this is so important. We're running it now on our PVTV, that workshop, where everything gets explained out. But you want to share with the community how to address what's going on with the coyotes and to get people interested in this 
Wildlife Watch program. So right. Well, so Wildlife Watch, actually, I'm going to credit Ara Moranian for starting um, moving throughout the South Bay to get the whole South Bay involved, because obviously, you know, the coyotes don't stop at the city line. So the idea here is to address this problem, which is serious, um, also to identify the difference between just seeing a coyote is one thing, and there are more, and they, they ebb and flow, and, and I've seen them through the years come and go. But then uh, taking our pets and eating our pets because people have been careless is another story, and many of us look at our pets as our family members, and they're very near and dear, as are my two dogs. Right. So we are looking to uh, have this program where the three cities uh, work together to make sure that people can identify when there is a bold urban coyote. Um, there are many stages that you can go through to get the additional help you may need. And yes, do coy can coyotes be euthanized? Yes, they can. They can when they prove themselves to be a bold urban coyote that will stare you down, that will not get out of the way, that will at, or attempt to take one of your animals or you or a child. Um, but something that is deemed to be a danger, uh, the county gets involved, and I've requested of our supervisor, Janice Hahn, uh, that they get more than the one commissioner that there is to deal with the whole county, mm -hmm. which is a key issue. I know, Mayor Brooks, you have been so diligent on working on coyotes to get the message out, to educate residents. What do you want as we wrap up this topic, let, again, the residents know about how they can, how we can learn to coexist with these coyotes? Okay, the first thing we need to do is to not feed the coyotes. And we need to be guards and guardians, and neighborhood watch is going to be wildlife watch is going to be neighborhood watch. So make sure that you talk with your neighbors about the importance of not feeding coyotes. Because if you see coyotes in your neighborhood and you're not feeding them, one of your neighbors is likely feeding them. Or they may be leaving food out. You know, the way our trash cans are made, it's Im virtually impossible for them to get into them. So unless they're flooded open with food, that's a problem. Nice. So they need to be closed. And they need to be able to call City Hall of any of the three cities to make sure that they acknowledge if they see a bold urban coyote, a one that will stand you down, one that will um, not leave when you try to haze it, one that will make an attempt to get you or your animal or a child or anything of yours, um, you must contact the city and you must file a complaint. You must call because if we don't file the complaints, guess what? It's not in the system and it doesn't look to the Ag Commissioner, which is what we're looking to have them come out and address this, mm -hmm. like there's a problem. So people need to know that they can hire their own trappers as well, as long as it's on private property. So if, if you have private property and you see a situation with a coyote, um, you can call City Hall and they'll give you the information. Uh, other cities are using this as well. Mm -hmm. So what we're trying to do, though, is address an issue uh, which does ebb and flow. So right now, it's going to flow because we are going to see babies being born, and uh, the moms, the, the parents are going to want to feed their pups, so it's important. Mm -hmm. That's my message. Well, thanks for organizing that workshop. And again, we it's, love our animals it's airing pets. on our RPV TV channel. Also, if you go to the city's website, you can click on the link. It's right there on the home page, so you can watch it and get all this great information that you um, were sharing that evening. So, we had Whale of a Day. We did. Whale of a Time there. Finally. And, and Meet the Goats. So let's talk about those friendlier times. Well, and, uh, yeah, on Whale of a Day, it was a month later, and actually it was the best weather we've ever had for Whale of a Day. And my suggestion is we consider moving that thing back, even though the whales might already be on their way. Yeah, but, but there was still, still quite a number of them migrating, migrating north that they, they were able, able to, to people able to spot. Right. But I think the main reason people really go there is not necessarily to spot the whales on that day. I think the main reason people go there is it is a family event. Uh, the city has really done a great job about making sure that children uh, and adults alike, it's educational. There are, there, are, there are also activities for children. There are play activities. I saw more booths of children doing face painting and water whale races. And 
You know, it's really good, healthy fun for families. I saw, I was so jealous because I'm a grandmother and my grandchildren are little and they're up in Washington. And all my friends, they were there with their grandchildren and they were having such a good time. So I went with them. You need to convince them to move here to paradise. Yeah, so, but it was an amazing success. I think, uh, like you said, it was moved, got getting rained out in March. Hopefully the council might consider bumping it up to April. I think it was pretty special. The weather was awesome. It was wonderful. We had 3,000 people. And really good uh, travel man- traffic management by Public Works. I want to give them a high sign. I have to say the staff and Corey Linder and, and the whole Parks and Rec staff did such an outra- outstanding it's job. It's a free event. You know, it's a free, free event, free another community. free event, as was Meet the Goats. Yes, and uh, that was incredible. I love that event. And the goats, you know, it's sort of they get a day off from working around the city because these goats have come come to the city because they're working for us. They are working. We're doing they're doing brush clearance, modification. right? <laughs> they call it fuel modification. Okay. I love that title. Yes. I'd like to get them on the switchbacks, too. So the goats, um, they gather for one day at the Point Vicente Interpretive Center back to the, that wonderful location. And... Um, and the company, uh, the grazers there that do that, um, that we hire, they give demos. Yeah, they did a demonstration with a border collie that was rounding them up, chasing them from one end to the other. It was wonderful because there were so many little children there, but um, we did have a traffic issue because there were so many people this year that next year we'll be looking at traffic mitigation measures um, because, you have to make sure that people are safe coming in because I've never seen so many cars uh, at the same time. But they were all packed with families. You know, you didn't, which was so great. That I think it's wonderful that Rancho Palos Verdes can be the city of families and people that, that go to have fun. You know, the other cities on the hill don't necessarily offer these. They mm-hmm. don't, and we do. And it would be nice if everybody contributed. But by the same token, right now, we're very proud and honored that we can do that. And we have a great staff to pull things together. So all those kids, good. so cute to have watching them feed the, the alfalfa. the children were chasing the goats. I know, the goats and were... then the goats were running away from the children. So it was pretty obvious that the children were going to chase and, the goats. And of course, you call those little goats kids. And there were big and kids. I and I said, the kids goats. are chasing the kids. <laughs> <laughs> the big kids, too. The adults, I think, were having just as much fun. Yes. And you also learned some great uh, goat facts. Did you pick up any goat facts? Do you, that One of them, I realized that didn't realize that um, the most the number one meat eaten in the world is goat meat. Ooh. I know. I don't know. I just thought that was like, I wouldn't have thought that. I didn't pick up that fact. <laughs> they give a list of, and that both female goats and male goats have beards. How about that? The guy that runs the program, he, he gives out fun. Well, I like guess that. I missed that part. I just remember when I was like 18 years old. Oh, no, I don't want to tell you that story. Okay. I saw a goat. I'll just tell you. I saw a goat and somebody, um, <laughs> we, there were goats and I was, I was with a group of people and there were a bunch of goats that were grazing. They were, they were doing the same thing that they do for centuries. They were clearing the field and somebody had an empty pizza box and they put the pizza box down and the goat ate the pizza box. Wow. Just the box, not with the pizza in it. Mm-hmm. Well, so the goats that, that come to our PV are much smarter than that because I, I was told there must be much they healthier. know they know which 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 uh, brush to go after. What's the non-native? I, they they really they eat the right oh, they stuff, do. which they is know, pretty incredible. Right. They know what to eat. They do. Yeah. That's good All because right. they're not going to devour everything. Okay. Well, we need to wrap it up here. Anything you want to add? I know we've covered a lot of different topics, and we're going to get you back here next month. Or if, you, just... if you invite us back to your house. <laughs> Sure. Yeah. yeah, you should get some photographs of our fossils. Yeah. But I, I just, I guess I would just add that, um, you know, your city council is really working hard um, on your behalf. And this is harder than I think we've ever worked, uh, other than the first couple of years when the city was formed. So I would just say, uh, you know, get involved, stay involved. We love to hear from you. We love to hear your suggestions. And just be part of the solution, not part of the problem, because that makes us all work together. That's what we're all here to do. We're all trying. And I want to thank our staff and you, because you you do a wonderful job on this, and our new video crew. 
We've got a great team here for RPV TV. We do, and I, I want to thank you because you work very hard. You do your studies, you do your homework on what the issues are. You know just as much about what's going on. Well, I'm a resident. I live in Rancho Palos Verdes. I have to make sure that you're taking care of us, and I know that you are. So you I appreciate that. Job. Keep it All up. right. Thank you, Mayor Brooks. That'll do it for this edition of RPV City Talk. Thanks for joining us. Don't forget to check out the council meetings, the first and third Tuesday of every month. <laughs> More than that. Watch the, yeah, I know those are the ones at least for now on <laughs> RPV TV. And we'll see you next time. Have a great day, everybody.